and welcome to the Prepared and More YouTube channel. Today we're talking about how you can find the depth of your water well. One of the common questions that we get online uh, is people wanting to know two things. First of all, how can I get water out of my water well if I don't have electricity? We have a video uh, that you can find on our channel that talks about getting water out of your well. But uh, the thing you need to know for any reason that you need to get water out of your well is how deep is my well or specifically where is my static water level so what is where is how far down do I have to go before I hit water inside my water well so I'm here at my well outside my home and I am uh, gonna take the lid off here and describe to you exactly uh, three different ways that you can possibly determine the depth of your water level so the first thing we need to do is we need to take the cap off and I've already used uh, my driver here with my 7 16 socket could also just use a, a wrench or something to get uh, there's five bolts on the top of this and so uh, I've loosened up these five bolts already I'm going to take those out then uh, remove our cap and now we can look down into our water well first thing we need to do uh, we need to remove the wiring but before you begin this whole process make sure you've turned off the circuit breaker to your well you don't want to be working on this with a live electricity so turn off that circuit breaker to your well you're going to want to remove the the wires out of the way just so they're out of the way then you can look down in your well uh, in my case I, I happen to know it uh, its depth but if you don't know its depth we're going to teach you three different ways you can figure out its depth so as I look down in there I see uh, the pitless adapter which is the pipe coming into my well and then it goes down to the well pump with pipes and wires but on the outside that's about the center like this on the outside uh, there's open space and there's several different ways we can use that open space to determine that so let's talk about three different ways so the first way we're going to talk about is, is probably the best way to do it if you've uh, if it'll work for you and that is basically to take a a bottle of bottled water and so this is just great value bottled water I've poured off about a fourth of it so it's still about three quarters full uh, so then with the lid off here you can see and what I've got is I've just got a string that's uh, I drilled a hole in the cap put a string through and this is good Mason's twine uh, on a 300 foot roll and then I just have a washer and I just tied a knot around that washer and the whole purpose of that is so that when I put the cap back on uh, I can support the bottle using the string and so the washer prohibits the string from coming back through so I, I get my lid nice and tight on there and as you can see my bottle will then be supported by my string again Mason's twine is what I have the whole goal of this is to lower this down into your well until it no longer is heavy again the water in it right now is making it heavy when it hits the water down in the well okay the, the little amount of air that I have this quarter of bottle of air will actually make the whole thing float and it'll no longer be heavy I will then know that I have hit the water okay so I'm gonna lower it down in there for example it'll go down till it is no longer heavy I will then mark on the string where it's at and pull it all the way back up and again that will maybe several hundred feet that's why you need at least a 300 foot roll of twine but then I can lay that out and measure the distance between my bottle and my mark on my string and that will be your water static water level now this again is is probably the easiest way to do it but I have to give you a couple other options because that method doesn't always work and that is true in my case this method would not work for me uh, but it might work for you the whole difference is is can this bottle actually fit down in your well between your pitless adapter that's down in there and the sides of your well in my case this water bottle is too big but in many wells okay they have smaller pitless adapters and that will actually go down in there and so if that works for you that's probably the best way to do it okay very simple doesn't require a lot of materials a second way to do it which again uh, would work for everybody however it's a little less accurate and uh, uh, is therefore not the best way in most cases to do it but it could work for you and that is to basically use the laws of physics to determine how deep your water is here 
and uh, or the depth to your water, we're simply going to drop an object down in there. Then using a simple physics math formula, we can calculate based on the time it takes to drop how far that water is away from here. So, uh, well, we can use two things. Uh, the professionals will use these calcium hypochlorate pebbles or or pellets, okay, they look like this, and this is basically what they use to shock with chlorine your, your well. If you have bacteria in your well or something, they will drop some of these down in there to, uh, to clean up the water, and so they're, they're basically uh, pellets of chlorine bleach, and so we could drop those. That's what a professional would use. You can buy these at your local hardware store in the well section or your farm and ranch store. These are uh, calcium hypochlorate pellets. Uh, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use something even more simple. And this is simply some ice cubes. What you do not want to use, you do not want to put rocks or pellets or anything that uh, would absolutely not dissolve. These will dissolve down in there, so they're not going to do any damage. Obviously, ice is just going to melt. So you can just get some ice cubes like I did. And we're simply going to drop this down in there, uh, avoiding all of the obstructions in there as we can. We're going to listen. At the same time we're listening, I'm going to use my phone's stopwatch here. Let me get that turned on here. So I have my stopwatch up and I'm going to hit start as soon as I release the ice cube. I'm going to listen for when it hits the water and then I'm going to hit stop. So let's do that right now. I'm going to get down real close where I can hear it. I'm going to drop the ice cube avoiding the obstacles. Hit start at the same time I release it and then hit stop as soon as I hear it hit the water. Okay, so I, I got an answer there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this several times trying to get an average answer here. So I'm going to do it again. Got another ice cube. Hit start. Okay. I'm going to do it again. Okay. Each time I did that, I'll average those answers. And what I get is about 3.8 seconds from the time I release it to the time I hear it hit the water. So the math on that, and uh, if you go online, you can find different physicists and uh, physics professors, math teachers teaching a very complicated math formula. What I've tried to do is simplify it because we have to actually calculate the time it takes uh, to hit the water and multiply that in a math formula to determine the number of feet, but also have to subtract out the amount of time it takes for the sound to actually come back up the pipe. And so, fairly complicated math formula, but we're going to simplify it here by just doing this. We're going to take the time we got, which for me was 3.8 seconds on my stopwatch. Again, that's kind of an average of doing several of them. 3.8 seconds. We're going to subtract a half of a second uh, to allow for human reaction time. Okay, so 3.8 minus 0.5 or half gives me 3.3 seconds. I then take that, I'm going to use my calculator here on my phone. So I'm going to do 3.3 seconds and I, I do that squared. So multiplying it times itself. So 3.3 times 3.3 and I get 10.89. Okay. Then I multiply that times 15, and I get 163 feet. So my estimate, based upon dropping an object down in there and doing the math, is it's 163 feet to my water level. Again, let me review that math. I timed it. In my timing, I got an average of 3.8 seconds. I took off a half a second to account for my reaction time. I'm a slow in reacting, so it uh, makes it 3.3 seconds. I did that squared, 3.3 times 3.3, and I got 10.89. Then my uh, multiplier there is times 15. So 10.89 times 15 gives me 163 feet. Again, that's an approximation. That's not going to be exact. But if you can't do these other methods and you just need a real quick approximate water level depth, that'll be something that will work for you. The last method we're going to do uh, is the one that works best for me. It's very accurate and can be done, but it does cost a little more money because you got to buy something. You have to buy a 300-foot tape measure. 
So these are about $25, $30. Uh, there'll be a link for Amazon there to find where you can get one, but a, a 300 foot tape measure. Then on the end of that tape measure, all I've done is I've attached, using a little carabiner and a padlock here, a heavy object. And it can be really any small heavy object, but it has to be small enough that it'll fit down beside all the stuff in your pipe. If you remember when we talked about the water bottle, the water bottle didn't fit, but it was close. So I do know that this padlock will fit, but it's again, just a heavy object that in this case I can drop down in there. And when I hear it splash and hit the water, then that will tell me my depth. So I'm literally just going to uh, put this up here, drop it down into my well beside my, uh, pitless adapter in there and I'm going to let it go and stop it when I hear it hit water. There it goes. There it was. Okay. In this case, 157 feet. Okay. So I know that that lock hit water at 157 feet. Now, if I wanted to continue to let this go down, I could, and I could actually find the bottom depth of my well, which I happen to know is about 250 feet. So we're not going to do that for this video, but it would actually go down until the lock rests on the bottom of the well. I'm going to pull this back up, and when I pull it back up, I should see that the lock is wet, indicating that, yes, I did hit water. And our 157 number tells me that my uh, dropping of my ice cubes was relatively accurate. It came up, like I said, with 163 feet, whereas this actual test came up with 157. Those are good, uh, good numbers there. So I know that if I'm going to buy a well pump, if I'm doing my well bucket, which I explain in a separate video, a well bucket to get water out of your well, if I'm going to use my well bucket, I need 157 feet of rope. So I pull this out of here, and yes, my lock is wet so it did hit water down in there so we know that our water level is about 157 feet now that water level will fluctuate depending on time of year depending on drought conditions depending on your usage but uh, measuring that a couple of different times a year would be helpful in determining exactly what level it stays at year round so in today's video we talked about uh, three different ways you can determine your well depth the water level the static water level is what we call that uh, there's other videos we talk about how to get water out of your well. It's using a well bucket. But uh, if you like this video, please like, press the like button down below, and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos about prepping. So thank you for coming to Prepared and More, and see you next time.